All right, hello, you crazy people out there. This is Dragonet Spam, and welcome back to I, I don't really know what to call this series. Let's make a tower defense game or something. Yeah, that sounds about right. Anyway, in the last part, I succeeded in making this absolutely ridiculous thing of a bunch of shapes like moving around the screen, and I don't really know what else to call it. And in this part, I'm going to be going and making this look a little bit more like an actual tower defense game. So the first order of business, I suppose, is uh, to X out of that so that I don't go blind looking at it, uh, and then I'm probably going to want the bullets to actually hit the uh, the things that they're supposed to be locking onto. And there's a couple of ways I can think about doing that. Uh, one would just be to make um, the enemy's hitboxes larger, which is honestly not the best solution, so I'm not going to do that. Um, if I wanted to, I could just make a transform and multiply this by like 50% uh, and do that, but I don't really like that solution. It's going to look kind of weird later on. So I'm going to uh, not do that. Another one would be to have the tower shoot instead of directly at the enemy to shoot it a little bit in front of them. And that would honestly probably be the best solution. Uh, that will require a bit of math though. And that is some math that I have not worked out that I should probably do um, off recording so I don't spend like an hour on it. So for now what I'm going to do is I'm going to <clears throat> cause the bullets to sort of lock onto uh, the target and sort of follow them around until it hits them. This is not the best solution because it's going to cause things to look really weird and logically things like cannonballs and arrows and what have you uh, really shouldn't be changing direction once they're fired. That just doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, but for now, I'm going to just say instead of uh, making this a temporary variable, this is in a, the, uh, the tower's step event when we're shooting the bullets. <clears throat> I'm going to be saying uh, target equals this enemy and we're going to be saying target.x, target.y. And now, uh, I can take this, can copy it into the bullets uh, step event. So let's go here, and let's uh, copy it there. I didn't dent that. And now, uh, the bullets are going to be uh, continuously chasing after the enemies that they're well, chasing after. Alright, you can see uh, that they're doing that now, and they're not actually really ever getting there. Are they? <clears throat> actually, I think they are, and that caused an error. How fast are these things moving? They're moving with a speed of 8, and I think the enemies are being created and moving at a speed of 8 too. Anyway, uh, let's just say, let's give these guys a speed of 10. And actually, before anybody calls me out on this, uh, let's go back over to tower step. Uh, this is redundant code, so I don't need that, so I'm just going to get rid of that for now. No, I'm not. I'm going to comment that out for now. I'm going to uh, put two slashes at the front of the line, comment that out, so these lines are going to be ignored by the interpreter. Actually, I think uh, GameMaker is compiled now, so it's going to be ignored by the compiler. I will be coming back to it later, though, so uh, I want to keep it around. Anyway, uh, let's address the error, and that's going to be... Somebody uploaded a video, uh, Killer Nacho. Let's say if, um, if the instance still exists, the reason that the error came up is because uh, the, the enemies hit the end of the road deleted itself and the bullet suddenly uh, was trying to follow a non-existent object. So if instance exists target, uh, then do this. Otherwise, doesn't exist, we're going to uh, do good old, uh, good old uh, instance destroy. And that should uh, get rid of any and all errors. Let's see. So I'm going to run this again. The bullets should be moving a little bit faster, and they are, and they also shouldn't be uh, causing any problems when they get to the end of the road. All right. So let's see. Good. You're deleting yourself. Uh, the tail of bullets is just kind of uh, spontaneously disappearing, and it's kind of weird. Actually, that looks really weird, not kind of weird. So I'm going to, um, I'm not going to have it delete itself. I'm just going to have it keep going in a straight line, and uh, it's going to naturally delete itself when it gets out of the room. So let's um let's try this. Come on. All right, that's wonderful. Uh, I'm going to um I'm going to put another one down here so you can see. Yeah, now they're just continuing along their uh their straight line and they're leaving the room. All right, so that's wonderful. Um, is it just me or are some of them flying off into the distance, uh, like up? Not entirely sure why it's doing that. I've seen that happen before. I'll figure that out eventually. Anyway. What next? I should probably uh, go and actually assign some like variables here. Um, if you played much tower defense, you will know that things like enemies typically have um, 
like amounts of HP, and towers have like damage output and ranges and re uh, recharge rates and stuff like that. So I'm going to, uh, in the enemy creative, I'm just going to say HP equals, let's make it 50. And let's see, in towers creative event, um, once again, I've said this many times, but this is going to get much more complicated as uh, the game goes on because there's going to be like different types of towers and different enemies and stuff. Um, I'm going to give this a few variables, and it's going to have, how about attack uh, equals, let's make this 2, so we're going to do an attack power of 2, uh, range equals 120, that's going to be in pixels, and let's see, uh, rate equals, you could look at rate in a couple different ways, you can look at it as the time between uh, shots or the amount of shots per second, I'm going to go with the amount of shots per second, and let's make this uh Let's make this two, so every half a second to shoot. And to actually utilize these variables, I'm going to say, uh, I'm also going to give this another variable, can fire equals, uh, this is going to be true. And now, I'm going to say, let's actually not mess with those right now. Let's just draw the range on the screen. And I'm going to add in the draw event one, draw self, obviously, and two, draw circle. And this is just going to be a ring around the tower, uh, showing off the range, and it's going to be starting at X, Y, a radius of range, and outline only. Yes, we just want the outline. That's going to be true. All right, so now I'm going to run this really quickly, or as quickly as Game Maker Studio likes to run their uh, games anyway. And now I'm putting down towers, and you can see they're the radius. <clears throat> so that's lovely. Um... Let's see. Next, I'm going to uh, I'm going to start using those variables. I guess I'm going to have the towers only fire at enemies within the radius. So let's see. To do that, I'm going to want. I think. Let's see. I'm going to stay with uh, the instance nearest the tower for now. Later on, I'm probably going to give the player an option to switch between the nearest instance to the tower and um, the instance that's farthest along the path and uh, therefore most dangerous to the player. So to do this, I'm going to say if, no, I'm not going to do that there. I'm going to say after you get uh, the instance nearest, uh, if distance to, is there a distance to object? Oh, there's a distance to object function. Uh, we're going to say if the distance to B is uh, less than or equal to uh, range. then do this. Otherwise, if it's not in range, then don't do anything. And we're going to say, uh, this is essentially going to be a... Uh, eventually, I'm going to put this in its own function, its own script, and call it, like, shoot or something like that. But for now, I'm just going to leave it here, and I'm going to say, uh, can fire equals false. And then, now I'm going to I'm gonna do one thing at a time. Let's uh, deal with the rate first. Uh, I'm going to deal with can fire later. Make it recharge later. So let's see, we're going to create this, and it's not doing what I want it to. The problem was that I was saying if the distance to the bullet was less than the range, and obviously uh, if you create the bullet like right on your own x and y coordinate, it's going to be less than 120 pixels away from you. I'm going to want to actually look at the enemy and uh, decide if that's close enough to, uh, to shoot at. Okay, so sorry about that. That was uh, one of the dumber things I've done all day, and it's only 10 o'clock. Alright, that is another error. Uh, I'm going to want to move this inside the curly braces. Alright, so I had to think the order of, uh, the order of uh, statements in the wrong order. Alright, so now, awesome, uh, we're only shooting at enemies within my range, and let's see, that's happening, that's happening, alright, perfect. So let's get out of there, and so now I'm going to deal with the recharge, uh, the recharge turn, so I'm going to say now can fire equals false. Uh, also, if um, if there's more than one enemy on the screen, and double ampersand for um, to signify and, can you still do? Oh, cool! You can still actually type the word and, and that'll do the same thing. It doesn't really matter. Uh, personally, I'm more used to the double ampersands, but for the sake of I don't know teaching and stuff, I guess I, I, there's no harm in just writing out and. So we're gonna say and can fire. So if that's also true, do I wanna? I could say this, but that. Uh, that to me is just redundant because this, uh, in any uh, condition test, if you say if just the variable name, it's gonna it's gonna look to see if it's true or false. 
All right, so that happened. We're going to set confire to false, and we're going to set a timer to reactivate uh, the confire variable. So we're going to say alarm zero equals. Let's see, what do I want this to be? The rate is going to be the number of bullets you shoot per per uh, second. So to get the number of time between shots, I'm going to say room speed uh, divided by rate. And that should be, uh, say the room speed is I think 30, 30 divided by 2, which is the rate, is going to be 15. And there's going to be uh, 15 frames of game between shots. And that's not going to do anything at all because I didn't actually put anything in the alarm zero event. Oops. All right, so uh, let's, let's do that now. We're just going to say alarm zero can fire is true. And the cycle is going to restart. So let's do this. So uh, let's put a nice tower down here. And okay, good. It's uh, it's more controlled now, which is what we want. And now I suppose, let's see, um, to take advantage or to make use of the last variable here, the attack power, uh, I'm going to say let's go back into the bullets create event. Um, we're going to give the bullet an attack power. Uh, let's say let's call this uh, attack equals my own attack. Um, this here is something that I do a lot on my own, but it might not make sense to uh, some people who are just watching now to say b.attack equals attack. Uh, this is using two different variables. This is just one of them is going to be a variable belonging to the bullet that we just created, and one of them is uh, belonging to the tower that's creating the bullet. To make this a little more clear, I guess uh, I better write that out. So the bullet's attack power equals my attack power, and um, this is something that I'm going to want to get in the habit of doing, in a, at least while I'm on recording make things a little bit more uh, clear what I'm doing. I should also get in the habit of like writing comments in my code uh, to explain what it does a little bit more, but I'll do that later. I'll do that like uh, off recording before I post this file on Mediafire or whatever. Anyway, um, let's see. Let's uh, say in my create event with uh, create event, a collision event with uh, one of these fancy things, we're going to say HP minus equals other this is going to be referencing the object that it's colliding with, the other uh, special uh, object. Other dot attack, and with other delete yourself. All right. So now it's going to be losing HP when it gets hit, and we're probably also going to want to uh, say if HP is less than or equal to zero. Um, instance destroy. Let's see, uh, I do have, I believe, yeah, HP is 15. We're going to make HP 10, uh, or let's make HP something like a 8, so that I only have to get hit, get hit by 4 bullets before I die, uh, because at 50 I was going to need to get hit by 25 bullets before dying, and that's kind of um, a lot. I'm not sure if that's actually going to happen. It's a little demonstration here. Just to be safe, I'll put like a bunch of these. Uh, yeah, now you can see that the, the shooting and the getting deleted. Alright, so this looks a lot more tower defensive than what I had in the last video. Um, with that, I'm going to leave this off here. Uh, we have a bunch of towers that actually do things. We have enemies that can do things that enemies do, which is like die. We have st uh, we have a basic stat system implemented. We have a basic stat system implemented with things like uh, enemy HP and attack power and uh, range and recharge rates and stuff like that. It's not bad. Um, I'm going to end this off here. I said that already. In the next part, I have no idea right now what I'm going to be doing in the next part. Probably, I will be implementing like a, a global health system. So like if an enemy manages to get through to the end, uh, you lose health, and if you've run out of health, uh, you game over. I'll probably also uh, start messing around with different types of towers, different types of enemies. That's just an idea. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have anything that you want to see me do. Uh, keep in mind that I do record these quite a bit in advance. I'll try not to do that so much now so that I can have a chance to see... Uh, what people have to say about it before moving on. Let me know in the comments if you want to see anything specific. Can't promise that I'll get to it right away, but I'll try to uh, I'll try to get to everything that people suggest eventually. Um, as usual, if you want to download this project file, link in the description. And for now, I hope you all enjoy that. Rate, comment, and subscribe. Watch more of the stuff I have uploaded, and I will see you all later.